This week's key topic is all about cold water immersion. So the key finding from this study from Emma Moore, Joel T. Fuller, and Crit Bellin, thank you for the research firstly, was around cold water immersion and how it can affect the recovery of uh, athletes. So they compared cold water immersion to those just doing passive recovery. They found it had a positive influence on muscular power, uh, but not muscular strength in performance. So for all those that want to improve your power, cold water immersion seems to be effective. And this research is suggesting that cold water immersion is also more likely to positively influence muscular power performance, muscle soreness, and serum creatine kinase release. So the perceived recovery of the athlete, so that the subject of how they feel particularly after high intensity exercise when compared to passive recovery. Once they relieve the ice bath, they they feel more recovered from muscle soreness point of view. And from an objective measure, they were able to produce more power the next day, as well as they've had a high release of creatine kinase, so the waste products are built up from high intensity exercise. The dose response relationships indicate that lower temperature of cold water immersion may be more effective after high intensity exercise for removal of serum creatine kinase. So we want to make sure that the temperature is below 10 degrees. And this research suggests that um, temperatures down to as low as six degrees was most effective for that effect of after high intensity exercise, which would be any sport and any like field sport. So soccer, rugby, football, not only in, in releasing your creatine kinase, but also and improving your power performance. The relationships indicate shorter duration, which is really interesting in cold water immersion, may be more effective after high intensity exercise compared to longer durations. So anywhere from down to three to five minutes were uh, effective in cold water immersion. And there wasn't strong research on spending longer than that. How can I improve my acceleration? I would start with, we want to make sure that you, you're getting a good understanding of technique. So coordinating your arms, and we want to make sure that you your shoulders and your hips are working in sync with each other. So getting good coordination with your arms, they're not crossing over, which can be a common mistake for footballers, but they're, you've got your um, hands coming out straight in front to where you want to try and head out in, out in front. You're getting good knee lift and we've, we're getting good contact with the ground. So doing some run drills like a march, a skip and some speed bounds can be a really good way to develop those. We want to start slow and get a good understanding and you might start with just some isometrics, which is just holding certain positions of your acceleration technique. So technique is really key. Using some constraint-based drills, so things like hurdles and putting them in front of you so you're, you're producing enough force to be able to get over the top of that hurdle and starting in a static position. What equipment should I invest in at home? So I would start with a squat rack. If you've got a, a couple of thousand that you can invest, then I would start with a squat rack and a couple of adjust hooks, J hooks. So you can do things like bench press, rack pulls, RDLs, and a uh, squats. Having a squat rack where you can attach things like dip bars and you can hang from. So you can do chin ups and hang leg raises, make sure it's nice and stable and hooked into the ground. And then from there, you'll need a barbell. And if you're young, you know, you can chip away at developing your weight plates. But for senior athletes out there, you're probably going to need over 200 kilos worth of weight plates. So 425 kilos, 420s, couple of 10s, couple of fives, couple of 2.5 kilo weight plates. Dumbbells will want to be anywhere between one to 45 kilos. So you can work on your tonic muscle groups, your postural muscle groups with your lighter dumbbells, and then more your large muscle groups with the heavier dumbbells. If we'll get into this week's power tip, which is how I use the Jim Wendler program for footballers. So there are many great training programs out there to get stronger. However, one of the simplest and most effective strength programs is the Jim Wendler 531 program. It, he is a world-class powerlifter and strength coach for those that don't know Jim. He's trained for many years of world-famous Westside Barbell Powerlifting Club under the legend Louis Simmons, who, rest in peace, has recently passed away. And his program is basically bench press on your Monday, squat on your Wednesday, bent, and then we've I've added in the bench pull on the Friday and then trap bar deadlift. So he had a vertical press in the overhead press. I've changed that for footballers to a bench pull. It's a four-week periodized program. You simply start with three sets of five for week one. Week two, you start with three sets of three. Week three, you start with a five, three, one. And then week four, you're doing three sets of five as a deload week. 